Hello everyone and welcome to another Origins of Expressions. Today we'll be going over the phrases Gild the Lily, Bed of Roses, Shrinking Violet. What do they all have in common? They're all phrases and idioms around flowers. Let's get right to work and start this video. Flowers. Flowers are beautifully designed by nature to attract people. From ancient times till now, flowers have been playing a vital role in our life. Truly, we can say that there is a significant relationship between flowers and human beings. Flowers are considered pure and auspicious as people use them for everything from the worship of idols to the decorations of many occasions, even to adorn brides and bridegrooms as well. So, it is no surprise that we see them in our language to help us express phrases throughout time. Today, we'll explore three of the phrases. Let's not waste any time as we bloom into our first phrase. Gild the lily. Gild the lily means to apply unnecessary ornament, to over embellish, to cover natural beauty. The term has evolved as time has gone on. We have seen it take shape as words get added or removed, and new versions are made up. As people remember words in the wrong order and carry a story in their memory, to gild the lily is a great example of how phrases can change as they travel through history. This phrase started in the time of Shakespeare when he used a similar phrase in King John in 1595. To gild refined gold, to paint the lily, to throw a perfume on the violet. Shakespeare did not quite use the phrase as we see it today, but he might have started the saying. As time went on, the phrase changed. We see it evolve in the late 1800s to people saying, paint the lily. Then a change happened where we mashed both phrases together and started saying the phrase as we know it today, gild the lily. We first see the phrase in print in the Newark Daily Advocate in 1895 in what seems to be a partial remembered version of Shakespeare. It reads, one may gild the lily and paint the rose, but to convey by words only an adequate idea of the hats and bonnets now exhibited absolutely passes human ability. Today we see the term gild the lily when we express that something is perfect and beautiful and does not need to be covered up. An example sentence is, my sister has good bone structure and lovely skin, so she doesn't need to gild the lily by wearing makeup. Well, let's let her finish gilding the lily while we move to our next phrase. Bed of roses. Bed of roses means a pleasant or easy situation. A bed of roses was first used in the late 1500s to talk about real flowers, a bed made of flower petals. The first written record was found in Christopher Marlowe's The Passionate Shepherd to His Love in 1599. It reads, and I will make thee bed of roses and a thousand fragrant posies, a cap of flowers, and a kirtle, embroidered with all the leaves of myrtle. This phrase has since come to be used figuratively to refer to an easy and pleasant situation. The phrase really took off again in modern culture in 1999, when the American movie, American Beauty, used the image of a bed of roses in a literal sense, showing a beautiful girl in a bed of roses. Since then, the term bed of roses can be seen all around, from bath kits to naming of sheets. Today, we still use the phrase bed of roses, but not to express a pleasant and easy situation, but the opposite, to state that life has not been easy or pleasant. An example sentence is, it's a pretty easy job, but it's no bed of roses with such long hours. Well, as they continue to work, let's move into our last phrase of the video. Shrinking violet. Shrinking violet means a shy or modest person. The phrase is kind of funny. It is not a girl named violet that's shrinking down in size, but instead a flower that discreetly recoils due to being shy. A viola family of flowers includes violets and pansies, which are colorful socializers that seem just the opposite of shy. However, the phrase shrinking violet was coined in the UK. The native English violet, also known as wood violet, is a reclusive and understated flower. The first written record was from the indicator 
in 1820, where the poet Lee Hunt drew attention to the modest wood violet. There is a buttercup struggling from white to a dirty yellow, and a faint colored poppy, and here and there by the thorny underwood, a shrinking violet. The poem is talking about the flower and not a person. We have to move a bit more into the future to see the first account of shrinking violet explaining a person. It was first in the Titusville Herald in 1870, and it reads, Debutants of the taxpayers of New York waiting upon Mr. Tweed with the title deeds of their manners and the shrinking violet, Tweed begging them to pardon his rosy blushes. Today, we still use the term shrinking violet to explain a shy person, someone who does not step out of their comfort zone. An example sentence is, after years of being seen as nothing more than a shrinking violet, Christine decided to overcome her fears and start talking to strangers. Looks like they are busy. Let's go ahead and move on. Ooh, fun fact. Did you know that each country has a national flower? Yep, that's right. Flowers represent the culture and tradition of a country in symbolic form. Let's go over a few countries and their national flower. Argentina, the Sabo. This fiery red flower was designated national flower of Argentina in 1942 for a variety of reasons. Some of the reasons are that the tree grows in many parts of the country, that it is mentioned in legend, folklore songs, and poems, and that the national coat of arms bears its colors. Barbados. Pride of Barbados. The pride of Barbados blooms all year round. The more common varieties are a fiery red and yellow, sunset color. Although other variations can be found, the national flower is the red variety with the yellow margin on the petals. It appears on the Barbados coats of arms. Reference to this flower were recorded as early as 1657, and it's a shrub that is often pruned into low hedge. France, the iris. The iris is used as ornamentation, and particularly in the military, it is long associated with the French crown, commonly pronounced fleur de lis. From antiquity times, it has been the symbol of purity. Japan the cherry blossom. Japan's national flower is the cherry blossom, which is also known as the sakura in Japan. It welcomes the arrival of spring each year and is symbol of renewal and hope. An interesting fact about the cherry blossom in Japan's culture is that during cherry blossom season, you'll often see people having picnics under the cherry blossom trees. This is called hanami or flower viewing. The tradition of hanami has been going on for many hundreds of years. According to a text from the 8th century, such festivals have been held since the 3rd century. And lastly, the United States of America, the rose. In 1986, President Ronald Reagan declared the rose the national flower of the United States. And in a special ceremony in the White House's Rose Garden, his speech stated, more often than any other flower, we hold the rose dear as the symbol of life and love and devotion, of beauty and eternity. Fossil specimens of roses date back nearly 4 million years, having been found in Colorado's fluorescent fossil bed. Well, those are the countries we have for you today. Did I mention your country? If not, leave me a comment on what your country is and its national flower. I would love to know. Well, that's the information that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed learning about the origins of our idioms and phrases. I would love to have you subscribe if you did. You don't have to be a shrinking violet. You can step out of your comfort zone and subscribe to the channel. I'm always looking for new friends. Plus, subscribing is quick and easy, and I would really appreciate it. Oh yeah, quick question before you go. Do you know any idioms or phrases around flowers? Maybe you know other idioms or phrases on an entirely different subject. I would love to see them. Leave them in the comments below. And you know, if I use one of your phrases, I'll give you a shout out. Thank you again for watching and subscribing. I really appreciate your support. Until next time, bye.